What's up, everybody? Joe here. Uh, I know you guys are all waiting for the show to get started live, and we're going to be there in just a few seconds, I promise. A couple of things. Uh, one, if you're watching the show recorded, thank you very much for being here. It's awesome. Come check it out live. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a lot of fun. Kiss Army members from all over the world are there, and they're having a blast and being part of the show, and you should, too. It's awesome. Two, we have a Patreon, patreon.com backslash podcast rock city there's a ton of stuff on there we do extra shows and everything like that and you can check it out on our patreon patreon.com backslash podcast rock city join it free for one week just to check it out that's pretty much it i'm out of here three two one peace when gene simmons went for it to become an actor uh (laughs) What if Sonny is fucking me up right now really bad? Uh, Did it hurt Kiss? How bad did it hurt Kiss? Did it help Kiss by putting everything back in Paul Stanley's hands? Um, Or uh, did it, like, um, make it, like, one of those things where Gene being, you know, not around as much where it hurt? So we're going to talk about that today. Thanks, Sonny. I'm Podcast Rock City Live. Joe here from Podcast Rock City, and with me this week, Sonny Hollywood Pooty. What's up, everybody? Hello. I'm so mad at you right now. You fucked me up at the beginning, and <laughs> it's such a dirty. You got to be professional. Joke. You got to work it through. Got to yeah, work through it. Was, like, what's wrong? With yeah, you? yeah. I the people are gonna watch the beginning of this show and be like, "Wow, those lines messed up Joe." Um. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. It's so awesome to see you. Uh, sorry, Lee's not here today. She's handling some family business, and Joey is handling. We're not sorry, think, he's not here. <laughs> isn't it like uh, Palm Sunday? I think it's Palm Sunday. So that would he's probably so doing for, family stuff. That would have been so great, Joe. We're sorry, Lee's not here. She's handling some family business, and we're not sorry, Joey's not here. Let's, All right, let's just, let's do it backwards. Deleted. Uh, what's up, everybody? Jo- no, okay. How are you guys doing? It's so great to see you. Before we get started, I want to tell you all that are here to watch the show live. Thank you. You are amazing. You guys that are watching the show recorded, come and hang out with us on a Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's a lot of fun. We're going to go ahead and uh, and talk about some things that are- there's really the news as far as news goes. There's really a, a couple of things that I want to bring up, and, uh, and 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 that's all. So let's just go ahead and get to the news. Podcast Rock City News. I've seen about uh, 643,000 different KISS podcasts talking about how much money it costs to get that new box set. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah, I saw that. And, um, and it's really amazing. Hey, everybody that's watching. Um, it's really amazing. Um, like nobody's happy. No, there, I can't find anybody going, I don't see the big deal. Oh, that's because the people that say, I don't see the big deal spent a thousand bucks and they're good. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's, that's true. The people that are bitching about it being a thousand bucks, they're going to bitch about if it was 200 bucks. That's a good point. Let me ask you this, though. Do you think that this is something that is like they've got a thousand sitting in a warehouse, or do you think that they just wait to see how many people order them? Yeah, I would think that they're printing them on demand, but I don't know that for sure because it doesn't sound like vinyl is that readily available to be printed. So 
maybe you do got to print them ahead of time, I guess. Um, kind of scary. Like Gene is still selling the vault. Remember he only had X amount. He hasn't got rid of them yet. It's been six years. Right. Well, uh, here's the thing. I, I get that. You know, how many were there supposed to be? Was it 2000? Yeah. I thought or it thousand. was 2000 or 5,000, something like that. It wasn't much. <clears throat> right. But you know, at two grand a pop, you're talking about, um, you know, not every kiss fan could get it. You know, that's, you know, I, I know that on one of the cruises, um, if you bought a jean, you want a jeans basis, they gave you a vault. Um, and that's how Bruce, our buddy Bruce got one. I was, uh, we, we were sharing a room and he's like, I think I'm, I can't decide if I want to get a base or a vault. And I said, you know what? <laughs> uh, here, David Donnelly. Hey, what's up, David? It's good to see you all the way from, I don't want to say the wrong part of the world. I know he's in England, right? The UK. Uh, he's going to set me straight now. For me, it just seems incredibly unfair that it's a thousand bucks for that box set, and yet it was eighty for an eleven CD beautiful coffee table book, and I missed it. I missed it too. I want. I went on Rhino Records because when I got the book with the vault, I've I got fingerprints on it. Like I'm not good with collectible shit, right? So I got I have fingerprints on it. Blah blah blah. I was thumbing through it. I read it a couple of times. And then, you know, I burned all the CDs, so the CDs are in good shape or whatever. So I was just going to get another book just to be able to put it in the vault as a book that I didn't touch. And by the time I went to Rhino Records to buy the book plus the figure, it was already gone. They were all gone already. Yeah. You can still buy the actual vault. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I'm not going to buy a whole vault for just the book and figure now. But that was a good idea. I thought it was actually cheap. That book alone is worth 150, 200 bucks. Easily, easily. Yeah. I remember. Hey, everybody that's watching. Hey, how you doing? I see. I tales, tales of a kiss geek. Hey, how you doing? Sonny and I want to come on your show. So work that out. Sonny and I want to come on and talk with you. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, uh, Ireland, Australia, the UK, all over the US. How are you guys doing? It's great to see you. Um, yeah. I mean, I remember when you got the book. You told us. You, I can't wait for you guys to see this book. Yeah. And then, and, and, and it's just amazing. It is just an amazing book. And then I actually had a few different people message me, um, just saying, uh, Hey, do you think I should get this book? Is it worth it? And I was like, hell yeah, you will not regret it. And so far nobody's come to every, I've had one person come to me and go, thank you for that. Make sh for letting me know. Nobody's come back and said, damn, this was a waste. E even the music historically is fun to listen to. Hearing the, especially the, where they're working out the demos. I really like that where, you know, they're, 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 you can hear them talking as they're about to record. The Van Halen stuff is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they had, let's say, uh, what do you say? KTEL. Remember KTEL? Right. Yeah. If KTEL was to sell, sell, 150 80 songs that never got released in the 80s by artists from the 80s. Should I pay 80 bucks for that? Right? About yeah. half the songs would be good. It's from the era that I love. And, you know, they would probably tell you there's a Thompson Twin song on there and a Kaja Gugu song on there and a Duran Duran song on there or whatever. Shada shada right? shada yeah. Shada so I would buy it just for that to have it be Gene. Right? That's just that much better. I just hope that Rhino Records didn't end up selling all those books to some collect, you know, to some person who's going to sell them on eBay. Like right. that, that would just right. suck. And, um, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Um, you know, ultimately that's something that happens and it's just part of being a collector and being a fan is you're going to get these guys that'll buy shit like tickets or anything yeah. else. And right now I can tell you there are a lot of people online selling trying to sell 25 30 copies of an ace record that they bought thinking that people would want every color oh, yeah. and every yeah. shade and they're putting them on and i'm watching and nobody's saying anything it's because people have bought one or two and they're happy it's like i don't need the bubble gum and i don't need the the uh the special one from uh what's that internet radio yeah, thing yeah, yeah. and plus you if know, you want all of them as you know, being a collector, half the thing is going and finding it yourself, not buying it from somebody else. Yeah. 
And and they take that fun away. You know, they right. take that fun right. away. It's like you can't go into Walmart and find the, you know, the lenticular cover because they got sucked up. And hopefully with them only, I think there was only a thousand. So I, I, I never saw one in my town. I never saw one even close online. So hopefully um, they were just... Um, Hopefully they were just picked up by fans. So the book, David Donnelly says the books are on eBay for 300 pounds. How many? That's, that's one of me. That's like 450 bucks. It's 450 bucks. Yeah. Something like that. Holy crap. That's ridiculous, dude. It was 80 something. So whatever. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I mean, if somebody really wants one that bad, at least there's a way to get it, but that, that you know it just it doesn't seem right <clears throat> um one other thing so <clears throat> you know i've been seeing a lot of uh you know fussing back and forth um about apparently what uh they're saying steve said about the ace record you know saying that he wrote 95 percent of it and three sides of the coin came to his defense and said he never said that that's not what he said. What he said was he came up with ideas, but he didn't write all of it. And then, you know, my, here's my thing, okay? If you guys, for if if anybody out there for one, hey, Chris Sinzak, how's it going? If, if any of you guys for one second listen to any Kiss record and think it was 100% written by Kiss... You're crazy. You all know the truth. The truth is, is that lots of outside people, you know, right, you know, with the band. And even if it was true, even if, let me tell you, even if it's true that it, it, let's say, let's just say I'm an artist. Let's say I'm Ace Fraley and I walk into the studio and a guy comes to me and says, I've written all the songs. All you got to do is play them and sing them. Ace sings them, Ace plays them. It's still an Ace record. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, I mean, Bonnie Raitt made her whole career on that. My problem isn't what Steve said. My problem isn't what three sides of the coin came in defense to do. My problem even isn't what Blabbermouth put out there. My problem isn't what Loudwire put out there, right? Because you know what happens in those entities. You know. My problem is somebody went to Ace and Ace asked for an apology, supposedly. That's my problem. And it's like, really? Guys, keep that shit. If you don't know what the hell you're talking about, then don't go tell Ace. And then well, Ace wants an apology now. That's not right. It's like, dude, Ace only knows basically what you tell him. He's not out there reading or <clears throat> listening to any of this shit, except for right. his close... You know, it's close quarter guys are saying stuff right. to him. Right. The the whole the whole idea, um the whole idea. I mean, I, I you know, this is the here's the thing, okay? You know, I, Joey's on our show. I think that he wouldn't bullshit us. He saw Ace playing. He saw Ace singing. He was with Ace while they reworked lyrics, reworked the songs, reworked the the price, the the parts. I mean, and and to be honest with you, if he told us off the air, I'd look him in the face and go, "Yeah, he's that's what he said." No, but he did not. He did yeah. not. He he told it. As a matter of fact, he's been talking to us since day one. We've known for a long time about what was going on, and we knew. The, we knew the minute he recorded the first drum track because he was so excited. He had to call and tell somebody. And it was beautiful and awesome for him. And I, I just don't understand what the big drama is. It's it's like somebody said today, "What's go back to Carnival of Souls. Just yeah. go back there. Uh, Paul and Gene just kind of abandoned that record. What? And I don't get what the big deal is. Was Spaceman a, like iconic record of all time because supposedly ace all wrote all of that it was complete shit so who cares if she got some help like i don't understand so i i don't know but whatever i guess we need something to talk about so might as well be ace looking for apologies 
Yeah, uh, see, there's John Patterson. Real, real, and true Kiss fans are moving on from the need to have all things Kiss. The original band is done in earnest. We have made our peace with it, and we see it as a worthwhile part of our lives. Absolutely, one hundred percent true statement, John. Everybody, all hail John! All hail John! Uh, I, I spoke for everybody. Sorry out there. Uh, don't uh, listen. As we move forward, don't forget. If you need to get in touch with us, you can at podcast rock city one. That's the number one at gmail.com podcast rock city one. That's the number one at gmail.com. You know, I was on the phone with somebody the other day and they asked me what my email was and I went podcast rock city one. They go, is that the number one? I go, you bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it's funny because I'll be with Karen and uh, if we're out and they're like, you know, if they're putting me in a computer somewhere and they go, what's your email address? I'll go podcast rock city one and Karen the next to me. I'll go, that's the number one. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like Sheldon knocking penny, penny. Yeah. You know, anyway, you don't know that yeah. that means. All right. So that being said, um, we're, that's all the drama I'm going with this week. I don't want any more. Let's go ahead and get to the topic of the week podcast rock city topic of the week all right so topic of the week this week i don't even remember what i said something like <laughs> Something like, did it hurt Kiss when Gene became a, I don't even want to use the word movie star. Is anybody that does a movie a movie star? No, right? To be a star, you got to be known. But Gene was known, I right? Know. Yeah, I guess you're in the movies, right? He was in the movies, but he wasn't a movie star. But I don't know, like, how close do you have to be to Tom Cruise before you say star? Like, I don't know. That's a good point. Right. Tom Cruise, an icon, though. Uh, okay, so all right. So one of the things that I noticed was I watched the preview for, um, um, yeah, Wanted Dead or Alive. Right? Do you know that they like show Gene? Maybe I think twice in it. Oh. Once is with a grenade in his mouth. The yeah. other time, I think he's on the phone. They yeah. never mention Gene no. Simmons. You got to remember, Rutger Hauer was super hot at that time. Most of the movies he had done was because uh, from the beginning of the '80s to that movie, right? So he was he, his career was, I guess, ascending. So yeah, the the teaser was all about Rutger Hauer. I only know one movie he did besides that one, and uh, that yeah. was the one where he was like a blind karate guy. Oh, I don't even know what that one was. Somebody's going to tell us. Blind yeah, I, Blind Fury or some shit like that. Blind You didn't you never saw Blade Runner? Blade Oh, Runner Blade was, Runner, Blade My bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you Stephen H. You are right. Yeah. Blade Runner, of course. Yes. Um so yeah, I would say he was in the movies, but yeah, the teaser, yeah, didn't have Gene at all. Why well, um none of the movies that Gene was in. Gene was really in the teasers. I don't think so. I, I watched. I tried to watch as many as I could. There were a few that he did. Oh, The Hitcher! Dang, that's right. But the, oh, I like that movie. movie. That was it. That was that a TV show though? Uh no, that was. A no, movie. it was a movie. It was a movie. Yeah. Nighthawks. Oh man, yeah. All right, so everybody's helping. You guys are awesome. Thank you, David Donnelly. Uh, okay, so all right, yeah, that's cool. I guess I know way more than I thought. It's like I when it's like hearing Night Ranger. As the songs go on, I'm like, wow, it's amazing. I know this. I didn't. I thought it was just going to be a couple. Um, the difference anyway, is how Rudger Hauer didn't do movies for 40 years, right? Most of his known movies are like in this short span of 10 to 15 years. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's. In, I don't think he's with us anymore. I think he's passed away. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it was a few years back. Um, okay. So let's talk about that. In Paul Stanley's book, he says. Uh, that he went to Gene and uh, I think he said he went to Gene and told him that he was thinking about trying uh, acting. And Gene, he says, I if I'm saying this right, Gene told him he had no interest in that. And then all of a sudden he winds up 
in in movies. Um, and uh, Paul, I think he did two things I want to say, and neither of them you see him. I, I think both one of them was something like like young doctors in love or something yeah. like that. And Doctor, no, I don't even think. Right. Yeah, young doctors in love. I don't even. I think he got left on the cutting room floor. I don't yeah, that's what I'm really saying. Cool. He yeah. didn't even make it. And then I, I, something I keep, I keep, I want to say that I heard that he was had something in Doctor Detroit that got cut as well. Well, he, no? it must have got cut because I've seen that movie ten times and I don't remember yeah. Paul Stanley being in it. Yeah, I watched. I loved that movie too. It was super weird. Now yeah. when you watch it, you get a different feeling from it yeah. because you yeah. realize. What's happening? Although, which movie came out first, Spies Like Us or Doctor Detroit? The oh, Doctor Detroit's way before Spies Like Us. Yeah, because it's like that, four or so, five years. Yeah, so yeah. that must be uh, that must be you know when they fell in love, and uh, she wound up leaving Paul for it. Doctor Detroit was a uh, Dan Aykroyd movie. Donna left him for Dan. Yes, Chris Sinzak uh, from Decibel Geek. How are you doing? Yes, that's what happened. It's it's crazy that I mean, you watch that movie now, you realize some crazy stuff was going on. Yeah, that movie's a little weird. Spies Like Us is a much better movie. Spies Like Us is awesome. Yeah. Um. Uh. Especially the scene where the Russian girl's coming out of the tent. Oh yeah. In the yeah. morning. Oh, Goodness. I know. Goodness. Goodness. Uh, I even like the soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> and that's Paul McCartney. Um. Okay, so let's talk about this, Paul. Uh, Gene. Gets his eyes set on Hollywood. You have to imagine that once he became a rock star, that the next legit thing for him to do would be TV. He did TV, Miami Vice. Remember, he tried it. He was on Miami Vice. He was a big drug dealer, I believe. And then um, half everybody that played on that show was a drug dealer, except for Crockett and Tubbs. And then he does that, and then he goes and does, uh, you know, a movie. Now. I remember um, seeing like the preview and you could see, uh, you know, Gene talking on the phone. I remember being so excited that Gene was doing a movie. I never thought to myself, well, does this mean he's not in Kiss? Did you? Uh, no, I didn't think about, uh, and obviously we didn't know about that he wasn't involved because he still had songs on the records, right? So there's no internet and blah, blah, blah. And there's no books at the time that are saying, hey, Paul's pissed off or whatever. Because reality is, if Paul was really in control, couldn't he have just done Kiss featuring Paul Stanley or go solo by himself? Or obviously he was scared to do so. He wasn't ready to put it to bed, right? So, but no, I never thought that, oh my God, that means Gene's not in Kiss anymore, right? But I didn't think that when, I didn't think Janet Jackson stopped doing music or never start music because she was an actress already or because Timberlake was on the Disney show and then he ended up in movies that he was going to stop doing music. Like, I just figured everybody's like Will Smith. They dabble in it all, right? And they do whatever it is every once in a while. Right. Um, so I guess the, 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 the main question though, is let's talk musically. Um, Gene, you know, what has been described as phoning it in for those records. Right. Um, you know, do you, when you listen to early Gene stuff and then Gene stuff, when he was trying to become an, an actor, do you feel there's a large difference? I know you're not a huge Gene lyric kind of guy, right? Yeah, I think there is a large difference. The stuff in the 80s is better. You think it's better? I think it's better. I think it fits the times. Now, the 70s stuff might have fit the times too, but I don't love a lot of the 70s music. I love more okay, of the 80s I, right. music, right? Right, so right. So for the time frame that he was writing for, that's fine. But I'm also a believer of, because I can sometimes be this way, is because we're both going to go take a test, but you're studying morning, noon, and night for three weeks, and I just show up and take it. That means I care less? Maybe that just means I didn't need to, I didn't need to study morning, noon, and night. 
shouldn't that be celebrated? That I don't got to work as hard, but I can be just as good. No, you're right. I get that. Um, uh, okay, here's a good question. Uh, Steve Steve H67 says, what would have happened if Gene Simmons' acting career had taken off and he had become a star getting lots of roles offered? Would he have stayed in Kiss in the 80s and beyond? That's a great question. And I'm going to go with he would have stayed in Kiss. Yeah, and you would have just got either less Gene songs or the records would have been spread out a little more. Right. right? And Kiss uh, just doesn't make the comeback that they made, right? It just doesn't right. end up happening. Gene but the comeback Simmons, was short-lived, right? So Right. Gene Simmons loves the live experience at the time anyway, especially in the eighties being that guy who gets on stage and has 10,000 people worshiping him, you know, for an hour and a half, two hours that <clears throat> I don't think he would give that up for, unless he was, you know, in his seventies and his back hurt. Yeah. 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 But you're uh, going to tell me good girl gone bad sucks. No, I like that song. I, I like a lot of Gene stuff. I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I was asking you, did you think that it's do you think the record suffered at all? Maybe. I mean, we're getting Paul's point of view there. If if you okay, would would you rather have what you have or a disgruntled gene that Paul won't let him go be in movies and he's got to sit there with his arms crossed? And sit in the recording. Say, I'd rather have him the hell out of there. Even Nevison has said in interviews that anytime Gene came in for a recording session, he would do his parts, and then he was in the corner reading Variety magazine. So it wasn't like he was a hundred percent in when he was at the studio either, right? So right. whatever. I'd rather have if you're not going to be fully in and you're just going to be involved a little bit, then don't be around twenty four seven because then you're just going to bug the hell out of. They do your uh, John, part and get out. Yeah. John Patterson says, uh, in the movie Trick or Treat, Kiss fans felt there was not enough Gene Simmons, uh, much like not enough Mike Myers in 54 and 85. Gene could have handled a cameo like a pro. Uh, no, uh, you're right. In that movie Trick or Treat, he's barely in it. But, yeah. they, but he's in the preview with Ozzy. Yeah. Where I think he missed out on cameos, cameos in movies can be difficult, right? Because the movies, they don't come out right away. A lot of them are on, you know, in different periods of working on them between 18 to three, 18 months to three years at times. If he was going to do cameos, dude, I would have hit every sitcom and every drama primetime show. Like do it that way. Right. So think about if he would have been on Chips and Hawaii Five-O and A Team and, you know, all of those, uh, what, uh, too close for comfort. Right. He ends up in family ties, like an episode here and there. Now he's all over TV all the time. Like, like, like too close for comfort. That's the one with the dad and the two daughters, right? Living in the house with the wife. No, no, no. That, that was, uh, Ted Knight. With the remember, he used to do the puppet thing. He used to be a cartoonist. Yeah, but his daughters. He had a blonde yeah, daughter and a brunette. So. Yeah, yeah. The, so. Gene's yeah. cameo could have been they walk in and he's like banging the blonde. You know, it's Who like knows? whatever. What the, Gene Simmons, everybody. I'm so happy you're in my house. Please get off my daughter. Uh, that would have been <laughs> interesting. What would he have done in an A team? He could have been a bad guy in the A team, right? Of course, he could have been. Yeah, everything he was in, he could have been a bad guy. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that that it's very interesting that they had a guy who's uh, born in Israel playing a like a Muslim terrorist guy in <laughs> isn't that kind of weird? It's like that's it's weird like, in the context today. Today it is, yeah, and all that, yeah. right? I guess in so. The context of eighty seven, it didn't matter. It just kind of fits him, right? But, yeah, yeah. Now it's different. So let's talk about let's talk about the things I can't remember everything that he's been in, um, but I will tell you that some of the things that I do remember he's been in. Okay, so let's talk about it. Okay, so I of course Runaway is awesome. I love that movie, 
Um, I thought that he played a great bad guy in that movie. And I thought he played a really awesome bad guy in, in Wanted Dead or Alive. When he comes out of the movie, spoiler, if you haven't seen this movie, uh, I'm about to give some shit away. So, uh, you know, anyway, when he comes out of that movie theater after they put a bomb in there and there's a little girl walking in with a teddy bear and he like pats her on the head or does this to her or something, he's about to murder her. He doesn't have to say a word and he's vicious. And that's who we was supposed to be, right? Like I, I thought he did a great job in Runaway. I really loved the character on Wanted Dead or Alive. It just fit him absolutely so well. And I get it. He jokes about having the grenade in his mouth at the end. I think that fit him too, right? Because it fit him grenades in his mouth, he's kind of jittering around and the eyes roll back. I mean, dude, that's Gene the whole Gene way. Gene Simmons, yeah. 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 Do, do you have his IMDB stuck up by yeah, any chance? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay, so let me see if I can remember some of the stuff. So I do know that he was in The New Guy. Did you ever see The New Guy? Uh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he yeah, played yeah. a preacher like, like yeah. in a mall or something like that. That was a cameo. And that was, you know, where he just popped in for a scene and popped out. Um, of course, you know, uh, do you... So okay, uh, was he in a in a movie called Red Surf or something like that? Yeah, he was with George Red... Clooney. I have that movie. It's a good movie. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. Is it a good movie? Yeah, yeah. I have it on. Uh, I think I might have it on DVD. I think somebody how, burned it on DVD. How much is he in it? Do you know, uh, not a ton. Uh, probably more than he was in Trick or Treat. Probably. Uh, so in the other, what, never too young to die. Right. That's what that's called. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, first of all, if you're a man out there, or maybe if you're a woman, the movie's worth watching just for vanity. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Yeah. She's one of my top, top, definitely top 10 most beautiful women. Um, rest her soul. Uh, that It's not a good movie. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a good movie. Um, so somebody said he's funny in Extract. I don't even know what that is. Dude, Justin Bateman. It's uh, Mila Kunis is in that movie. Uh-huh. Dude, that's a good movie. I and never he's, saw he's it. Like, he's like a lawyer in the movie. I think he's Joe Adler or something like that in the movie. And uh, he comes in. He's on a TV commercial at the start of the movie, like closer to the start. And then he comes uh -huh. in as a character right in the middle-ish of the movie. But he only has total screen time. Dude, if it's three minutes, I'd be surprised. Huh. I, you know, I think it would be fun to, uh, you know, get an IMDb list and then, you know, look for the movies that I never saw. Uh, I really didn't enjoy Trick or Treat. I did. I mean, he's in that movie. It's not really a Gene Simmons movie. Uh, I didn't really enjoy that. You know, is Skippy's in it from uh, whatever that show was. And uh, um, but <clears throat> with Michael Keaton or Michael P. Keaton or I don't even remember well, who, you know, anyway. Uh, so, so here's the thing, just to make sure that we cover the bases on this, do you think it did or did not hurt kiss by him doing that? Do you think that it might've hurt Paul? Okay, wait, let's start with kiss. Do you think it hurt kiss? I don't think it hurt kiss. Okay. I don't think anything you do in media that is putting your name out there and people have attached to you to a member of kiss hurts the brand okay. right unless you're doing midget porn or something you know what i'm saying like he's in motion pictures that are in theaters that can't possibly be hurting the big brand that can only enhance it midget porn and zebras where are we going with this <laughs> i cannot i cannot handle this day um so okay but do you think it hurt paul Emotionally, yes. And I think, honestly, Paul ended up hurting Gene's movie career. If Paul was supportive, I think Gene takes more roles. I think Gene walked away from her roles to keep the peace with Paul. I think we're assuming, as the Kiss Army, that Gene didn't get any big roles. Why don't we assume 
that he walked away from big roles to keep the peace with Paul. Oh, that's a that is a that good could easily be true, right? It could be true. Um, man, that's that's a good point right there. But let me ask you this: You remember that you know, movie, Blown Away? Uh, Tommy mm-hmm. Lee was a bomber. Yeah, you can tell me Gene Simmons couldn't have done that part. No, that's true. There's a lot of things. And, and here's the other thing. He's not a bad actor. No, he's not. He's not a bad actor. Um, he's a good actor. I, I mean, he's a, a he's not, you know, I mean, he's no he's no Tommy Lee Jones or, you know, anything like that, but but he's a he's a good actor, as believable as anybody else that I've seen in movies. You watch it, you it's, you know, especially as a bad guy. He he knows what a bad yeah. guy is supposed to be. Do you think though that but as a child Gene Simmons loved movies and he loved the movie theater and do you think that it was just a natural progression oh, yeah. for him to 100%. to go from do you think that it's there's a chance that if he wouldn't have become a rock star that he may still have tried to become an actor Oh yeah 100% 100% I mean he, the whole lo- Yeah the whole kabuki mindset is right. a theater mindset, right? Hmm. I think about this. He could have been a Bond villain. It's possible Paul screwed him out of being a Bond villain. Okay, let's step back for now. Do, okay, I, could I see him playing a Bond villain easily? Yeah. But could Paul Stanley talk him out of being a Bond villain? Like the Gene Simmons ego and going, this is my chance to be a Bond villain. Like so, you go down let me ask you this. Okay, so let's play this out. Let's say it's 1986, right? Okay. They're about to start working on Crazy Nights. Paul has had enough. It's uh-huh. been six years of bullshit with dating Cher, and I'm going to be in movies, and now he's been in two or three. He wasn't around when I needed him at uh, Animal Eyes. He wasn't around when I needed him at Asylum. Now we're going to go into Crazy Nights. I don't want to do the production anymore. Give him an executive production credit. So we're going to go get Nevison. Nevison just save heart. He's going to end up saving us too. Gene, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you are not in the studio helping with this record, Kiss is no more, and that will be a Paul Stanley solo album. If you're ready for that, bless you, go be a Bond villain. Otherwise, you better get back in this band. Gene, at that point, cannot take Bond villain. He can't take right. Bond villain. And it wouldn't make him as much money either as it would That's right. going That's on right. tour. And if they, as we have now found out, that they were thinking about someday coming back into makeup and possibly having some sort of reunion tour and what would that mean later on for money and blah, all that's done if it pisses Paul off right now. Right. John Patterson, uh, that's the point we're making right there. That's a good point. Gene also knew Kiss was his bread and butter day job. He, uh, Gene should have used his rock star power to get the Elder movie made. Uh, it's a, I mean, we can't ever judge that movie because we have no idea how it would have come out. Especially we know there was a script because it was for sale in the Gene Simmons in the kiss auction years ago i'd love a shot i know that there there's a lot of people online that know the person that owns it and he refuses to let anybody read it which is some harsh shit to do but if you're out there and you have a copy and you want to send it to us that would be awesome um but uh yeah he could have probably used his power to get that movie made but the problem was i think that when the record didn't sell well it 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 it, it probably made the it probably made the management go, we're not doing this. Well, Crazy Nights was platinum, so they were fine there. Right. right? But they were that's their comeback right there. Right. right. Nevis, anything Nevison was touching was going platinum platinum anyway. It could have been literally anybody. It could have been Maduro, probably wouldn't have mattered. But um I think there was a come Jesus, you in or you out? Because I'm going to go do something else then if you're not in this band. Right. And we also know that Eric was less and less happy. So Paul's getting it from Gene doesn't show up. Eric's fucking pissed off at me all the time. Bruce is wondering what the next album's going to be. And I'm sitting here going, where the hell's my partner? 
my partner for all these years. Yeah. And then I go to the movies and I see him in drag. That's what you signed up to do. Seriously. You could have been in the studio and you're doing that bullshit. Right. Yeah. That, I, you know, <clears throat> he doesn't, he goes into some detail in his book. Paul does, you know, yeah. but I, I would have loved to have been able to sit there and pick his brain a little more to go. What did you think about the, you know, the drag and the, you know, did you even like the movies? I, I would tell you if I had to guess, Paul would never say this out loud. If I had to guess, when Paul saw him in Runaway, he's like, oh, shit. Homie's got chops. Uh, this is going to be a problem. When he saw him in One and Dead or Alive, oh, my God. I have to do something. Otherwise, Kiss is done. Because I think he saw somebody that was going to take the next step. The other thing. Does Gene get credit for seeing the writing on the wall in 81, 82 and going, you know what? I think I better get to Hollywood because I don't think Kiss is going to be around. Right. He doesn't get any credit for that either. Interesting. <clears throat> he definitely did see, you know, have that idea. But, but did Paul have it first? According to his book, you know, he was the one that was taking acting classes and then doing that stuff. Did, did you know, uh, you know, I, I did see something one time and I don't know um, if we could find it. I can try to find it while we're uh, while we're doing this. Did you know that Gene, uh, there's an audition shape, uh, tape out there where Gene is auditioning for yeah, what's the uh, who's the character? Um uh, Samuel the, Jackson plays him. Yeah, I can't remember the character, but it was early 80s. I think it was early 80s, the thing that we saw, or the thing that I saw anyway. Here's the other thing, and we can ask the folks that are uh, listening to us and watching us too. We can imagine Gene playing a bunch of characters. Right. I can't. I can't imagine Paul playing any. I can't place Paul in a movie. I love Paul. This has nothing to do with Sonny Hates Paul. I don't need the Sonny Hates Paul thing. I can't imagine Paul playing a part in a movie. And selling it. Think about it. Because he's going to have to be the hero, right? Well, He's not going to be able I, to be I, the villain. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think I could play, see him playing anybody but a rock star or himself. There you go. So he has to be either in... Purple Rain are hard to hold. Basically, that's the only way he's going to be able to sell it. Damn, you just brought up Hard to Hold. I love that movie. I absolutely love That's Rick love Springfield? It. Yes, I love that movie. I saw it in the theater. Yeah, love it. But he could have been in that movie, though. Yeah, but that's the only thing Rick could have done, except for the soap opera he was doing on TV, right? So it's like, Paul, I just don't see it going. He wouldn't have been able to do a comedy because he's got to be too serious. Can't sell the drama. Can't be the hero. Now, so he'd have to be what? Some, like it'd have to be uh, a Studio 54 thing. And he's one of the sexed up, you know, shirt half open, hair all over the place and girls kind of hanging on him. But that's not a leading role. Right. Hmm. It's all real interesting because it really seems like uh, the person that was made out of all of them that was made to do movies or was Gene. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, Ace was in uh, something. Oh, so Paul did eventually do Phantom of the Opera. Yes, I watched that. I didn't think that was bad. Uh, so that is something. So maybe Paul was would have been more built for something like Broadway. Broadway. Now, Broadway, where you can use your voice. And you can yeah. kind of over, you know, because they're over actors, right? This is not right, yeah. motion pictures dramatized. They're trying to get the person in the back of the room to understand what's going on on stage. Okay. Well, that he owns the stage. So it doesn't surprise me at all that he did well in Fan of the Opera. But could you imagine Paul being in a sitcom? Paul can't do a sitcom. 
No, that's true. At least I, I wouldn't think so. Um, dang. You know, all this is, ma you know, making a lot of sense, you know. Uh, I wonder if you guys out there think that Paul, well, tell us a, tell us a role that you could see Paul Stanley doing. Podcast Rock City One, that's the number one at gmail.com. I would love to know what, and no joking. Don't be like, oh, he could have been Iron Man. No, he couldn't have. Um, oh, yeah, John Patterson is an interesting one down there. Yeah, those are all, yeah, those are all, what, fourth, fifth actors, really? Yeah. It says Paul Stanley would have been a good straight man in any Billy Crystal or Woody Allen movie. Maybe the owner of the Catskills Resort, Resort and Dirty Dancing. Okay, so what are we figuring out? People out there are saying Paul could have done movies, but it would have been all supporting roles. Right. Supporting roles. Um. Uh, so would you say, cause I don't really understand how this is put. Would you say Gene starred in those movies that he was in? Yeah. At least well, the first some, of few. Them, some of them. Yeah. So to me, the lead villain is also a star in the film. Right. Right. So like, uh, let's take uh die hard. Right. So yes, Bruce Willis's character is a lead in the film, but you didn't tell me Hans Gruber is not a lead in the film. No, that's a good point. Right, but the guy putting in the second missile in the thing that hit the the hit the tank thing, that guy's like eighth on the list. Twenty <laughs> eighth on the list. He's, a, yeah, he's, he's way behind guy. Bonnie Bedelia. <laughs> <laughs> he's right? like so, so. To me, usually the leads are the hero, the villain, and then whoever the love interest is. Right now, whether that's two female leads in the in the male love interest or the two male leads in the female love interest. Those three are the leads, right? Those are the three you usually see in the movie poster, right? But come on. I just don't hey, see Paul. Doing that. Okay, so listen, I know I've said this a hundred times and all you guys that are watching, um, I really appreciate your comments. I absolutely, they're always amazing. And I have always said, you guys are the fifth member of this show. Okay. Your comments today have been wonderful. I want to, I want to, um, Sven, there's one right there. That's, uh, from, um, from, from Brent. Can you put that up, please? It says with Paul's low self-esteem, he didn't want to get left behind. That's a hell of a point. Don't you think? I agree with that, uh, Brent. I would also say, you know, and we all know Paul, whether it's uh, insecurities, whether it's sensitivity, whatever it is, it's too bad that he has that at, at times because I could honestly say, and I think most people listening would agree, that from 79 to 92, Paul's rock voice is goddamn untouchable. Right, so if he really had full confidence in himself, he goes and does a solo album or two. Dude, you're talking about Steve Perry esque type stuff. If somebody's going to give him a shot, now if they're just going to see him as the ex singer of Kiss, I guess that's going to be a problem. But he could have been Billy Idol. He could have been Billy Squire. He could have been Steve Perry esque if he would have had the confidence to go do that. If I was Paul and I had that confidence, and just think about it, that rewrites the whole story. The reunion still happens because people are doing their own thing and now they come back and do a big thing, right? And you, we would have two Paul solo albums that sound a lot like probably Crazy Nights and Hot in the Shade, probably, right? But so what? Right. But I don't think Paul had the <clears throat> guts to go do that. I That sounds really bad. I get it. But you, you got to have, you know, you got to take a risk. You got to be confident enough to be able to take a risk. Um, it says if Paul wasn't the lead, I guess, actor, and he wouldn't have been the eagle. But, right. but here's the thing. He, so, but I don't know if that's true because my understanding is, is that in that, I think it's Young Doctors in Love or something, I think that he did a, a role in that got cut. He's not the lead. He's like somebody that gets, I think, a rock star that gets brought to the hospital. So I don't know if that's necessarily true or, and I'm not, and I don't really, in the book, I'll have to go back and read it. I can't remember why he did the role if it was for a buddy 
that was making the movie or a friend that was in the movie or something like that. Or, you know, um, uh, it's really, this subject's been very interesting because it's not a, something that we've really, we, I don't think we've ever touched on this in our almost 11 years doing this show was, was what are the things that hurt, you know, hurt, you know, we've done mistakes that kiss made, you know, but we never did, you know, this, you know, did this, how bad did this hurt, you know, kiss, yeah. you know, but let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. So hurt kiss. So if we agree that Gene being in movies hurt kiss, then we would have to agree that he would have somehow made the sales better by making promotions better for kiss and that his songs would be better on those albums. There is no way we can say either one of those things to be true. Right. So in my mind, it didn't hurt Kiss. It probably helped. Yeah. He was a lot. I remember seeing him in a few, because I, I don't, I didn't watch a lot of TV. Yeah. You know, I was more of a go outside kid. Like a lot of kids were, you know, our age, but, but I do remember being at home and seeing an interview with him on HBO. And I do remember seeing an interview with him on, I think on entertainment tonight or something about, um, not runaway. I think it was wanted dead or alive. It might've been runaway, but think about this too. He also did. So he did a move his, the, he, okay. Timeout. He does a movie with, uh, Rutger Hauer and Tom Selleck, Tom Selleck, arguably, the biggest name at the point, sex symbol wise, especially, uh, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent with Magnum PI. So he's the bad guy in that movie. You got up and coming Kirstie Alley, who isn't anybody at the time, but she's definitely starting to make a name for herself. She winds up becoming, you know, how many years after, I don't know what year she joined cheers, but it wasn't a lot of years after that. I don't think. No, nah, it was only two or three years afterwards. Yeah, you know, um, he kills her viciously too, man. It's so oh yeah. yeah, knife in the back of the neck. Spoiler, in case you <laughs> haven't seen it. Um, that's an interesting comment right there. Steve H sixty seven said about Eric Carr working with Ace. So the comment says they didn't like Eric Carr working with Ace, yet had no problem with Gene going off and doing movies. So first of all, I think Gene <clears throat> was probably going to try movies no matter what, right? Because he's one of the leaders. I personally think that Paul had a problem with Eric going and working for Ace because Paul and Eric were not getting along well together. And the last thing Paul needs is to lose Eric to Ace because he knew Ace was coming back and he told you so. See what I did there? Nice, did nice there. one. Ace was nice. coming back and he told Thanks, you so. Thanks, Gene. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, so he knew Ace was coming back and the last thing he wants to do is lose his drummer to his prior guitar player. And yeah. that could have easily happened, especially I'm, if Eric's not feeling good in Kiss. I mean, in all seriousness, if we sit back and think about everything that was going on this time, there, to be fair to Paul Stanley, there was probably a whole lot of pressure there. There's a whole lot of drama and a whole lot of pressure. A hundred percent, because Gene's got this other income stream, possibly, and Paul's looking at him going, dude, what about this income stream? That you benefit from that I got to do just to live on. Right. Right. So, of course, I'd be pissed if I was Paul, too. 100%. So, you know, he said he said in his book something to the effect of, you know, if I'm doing most of the work, that's why he put himself out front. You yeah. remember? And the yeah. album cover and did the producing, I guess. And, uh, you know, that was a I mean. If I'm Paul Stanley and I'm still getting material from Gene, I, okay, I don't know Paul Stanley. None of us do. We all assume that they all have egos. We, we, we're, we're probably right. We're probably right. It, you know, it may be a little less or a little more than we assume, but here's my thing. Wouldn't, wouldn't Paul... Do you think it was mixed? Do you think that there's a chance that on one hand he's going, damn, you know, Gene's not around, but on the other hand, he's going, awesome, Gene's not around. I could do, I can mix this how I want, make it sound how I want, write the songs, 
put these songs on. You know what I mean? What do you think? Oh, yeah. There's got to be, at some point, you have to make peace with it, and that's how you end up making peace with it, right? But in the end, okay, Joe, I know you're a homer. I but am. you're going to have to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Today, right? 7.54 p.m. Eastern or March 24th, 2024. Who is more popular, Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley? Right. Gene Simmons is. He was that way in the 90s, in the 80s, in the 70s. I'm sorry. I love Paul. I love more Paul songs than I love Gene songs. But when it comes down to it, Gene's character connected with more people. People like the villain. He was the demon that helps. The fire breathing, the blood spitting does not hurt the situation. And he was the one out there. He was a tall guy and he was willing to go do interviews and go speak his mind, etc. And I get it that when we saw it on MTV, it always seems like Paul was talking before Gene was talking. But who had a better shot to get on Oprah? Gene. Who had a better shot to get on any talk show? Gene. Because he's the most interesting. So when it I comes think they both it, were on it. At, I get it probably had both of them on, but Gene was the name they really wanted, probably. That's the guy that wanted. Um, I wanted to show you something that was I know you've seen this before. Let's see. They did the Who Wore It Better. Have you ever seen this? Oh, uh, yeah. With uh uh Linda Carter, right? Yeah. Right. So there's yeah. Gene. And then Linda Car. Oh my goodness! Look yeah, at that yeah. beautiful woman. Stop showing so Gene. <laughs> <laughs> so is right there. It's crazy though, right? It's it is the same outfit. Yeah. What? How did this happen? So you've got to you've got to you know you you remember that it was, um, it was she wore it performing. With a Kiss dance band, right? Yeah. Um, I think I have it right here. Let's see. Linda Carter. Yeah. So there. Okay. So this is the thing I always told people about where my mom called me and said, hey, come in. Kiss is going to be on TV. And then I watched it. And I was like, I don't think that's Kiss. Um, and it wasn't. But so she danced with Kiss in that. And then Gene wore the outfit. <laughs> in another movie and it's the same freaking outfit do you think he bought it and thought i want to wear that one day <laughs> yeah who knows i i don't know that is super super um yeah pretty weird um okay listen we've talked about this it's been a lot of fun we have decided in the end it did not hurt kiss for gene to become an actor, at least in our opinion. Um, Paul may have something else to say about that. He might go, damn, you don't even know. You know, but in our opinion, as fans, it it made us more excited. Yeah, like I said, unless you believe that Gene's songs would have been better and that the records would have been promoted better to sell better, Gene couldn't have heard it. Period. Right. Well, there you go. Uh, you guys that are watching right now, we have a Patreon, and uh, it's patreon.com backslash podcast rock city. Sonny and I are about to go record a new episode for our Patreon people. If you're a member of the Patreon, you can do that for free for one week. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Just join it. Go and look at all the stuff that we've put on there and, uh, and check it out, even for just one week. And then if you like it, join. And uh, you'll get a new and extra show every week uh, when we do them. I will tell you guys next week is Easter, so we're going to be out. However, I think I'm going to record a couple of 20-minute Kiss Fix episodes, and I'll put them on uh, here for you guys to watch on next Sunday, uh, you know, while the rest of us are celebrating our holiday and being out of – I'll be out of town. So I'm having a good time. Um, Sonny, do you have anything to add? Uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching with us today. There's a lot of people online with us today. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know what I'm going to say? Uh, we love kiss and we love kiss podcasts and you're going to hear the commercials for all the ones that we love 
right after this in three, two, one, peace. <laughs>